Aloha and welcome to this screencast, uh, which is an introduction to the module called Cloud Deployment. I think this is going to be the funnest, is that the word funnest? The coolest and most fun module that you've had all semester. And it's for a very simple reason. Because what you're going to do is go from this to this. Did you see the difference? From this to this. It's kind of like at the eye doctor, you know, when they say which is blurrier, you know, A or B. Okay, one more time. I bet you all see it now, right? We're going from a local installation of an application, surf, in this case, Surferpedia, to surferpedia.com a URL on the web anybody can go look at okay and it turns out that just this small little change in the address bar has a lot of implications okay it means that whereas so far we've been working on collaboration through sharing a github repository which is awesome okay it allows another developer to you know download your code and look at it and run it and debug it it's all great but what about your users what about your mom who might have really great insight into surfers but doesn't know anything about play framework or you know clean compile eclipse and semicolons and all that stuff right you'd like to have users and domain experts involved in the design of your application okay now you could kind of make some screenshots and share them with mom and everything but you know she's probably not going to really be able to give you uh, as much insight as she could if you could actually just send her a link and say here it is take a look at it let me know what you think so the idea here is that you're eliminating an incredible amount of friction in the process of provide or in the process of creating the ability to interact with your user community okay so that's the first great thing and probably the most important thing for you folks at, at, at this point in time okay the second thing that's cool <coughs> is that if you wanted for example to start up a company in a weekend turns out you can if if by company one means a website that kind of talks about the services that, that could be provided and it turns out that this is not that hard. You guys are probably 95% of the way there. There's no complicated programming involved at this point. It's kind of, there's a, a lot of, there's some steps and some stuff you got to set up and some, again, you know, a, a, a sequence of commands, a workflow that you have to get comfortable with. But literally, once, once you get comfortable with this workflow, you can bang this out, you know, in, in a couple of minutes, actually. Well, maybe not two minutes, but like 10 minutes, okay? Literally 10 minutes. And it involves two steps. One is you pick a cloud-based deployment service, and there's a bunch of them out there. I'm listing some of the most popular ones. Heroku, probably most of you have heard of. CloudBees, lesser known than Heroku, but happens to have actually really nice support for play. So we're going to use CloudBees in this class. Then there's Amazon Web Services, OpenShift, Google App Engine. There's a bunch of them out there. The idea is that these are places on the web that will run your code for you. You can actually have a running application. You can, you, can, you can deploy your code to this service, which will run your application for you. And then the second thing, and they'll, they'll actually create kind of a funky domain name that you can use to, to look at things on the web. But really, the second step is so simple that, that um, I'm going to teach you to do it and actually ask you to do it once. It's going to cost you 10 bucks, but, you know. It's okay, um, just so that you, you feel comfortable with this, which is to go to a, a hosting service like Namecheap um, or GoDaddy and just buy a domain name. Um, they cost anywhere from about $4 a year. Well, you know, if you want to buy, I don't know, you know, Coke.com, that probably costs you a billion dollars. But, you know, it, it generally, the real cheap ones that are kind of weird looking might be four bucks a year. A real decent one like surferpedia.com <coughs> surferpedia would be like eight to eleven dollars a year. So it's ten bucks basically to buy a domain name. Um, and then what you do is you redirect it to your deployment on Heroku or CloudBees or whatever so that that um, when someone goes to surferpedia.com, which you've 
bought through uh, you know, a place like Namecheap, it's actually going to redirect to your CloudBees site. Now, the, the actual user is never going to see that it's CloudBees. They won't ever know because the URL will always look like uh, surferpedia.com. Okay? And in fact, a lot of you know, websites that you go to turn out to be being run at Heroku or Amazon Web Services. Okay, so this, I, you know, I'm, I'm presenting this to you from kind of your perspective right now, which is a way to go from localhost to a URL, and what are the advantages to you personal as a developer um, and your ability to share applications. But, but what's very interesting about this is that this is part of this overall huge paradigm shift in software development. And there's a lot of terms for it that, that have some subtle differences platform as a service, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, but they're all kind of, um, you know, variations on this common theme of cloud computing. And that is the idea that now in internet service providers are going to start taking over huge chunks of what used to be involved in, in providing software um, and, and lowering the overhead to the typical developer by orders of magnitude both with respect to time and money and and even knowledge okay so if you think about it let's say we wanted to do surferpedia.com and let's say that it's you know i don't know 2005 let's say or no let's it's 2013 let's say it's 2003 let's say it's it's 10 years ago we would have to buy a machine no it's we have to go a little farther back than that 1990 2000 maybe, 1997, let's go to 1997. We'd have to buy a machine to run the system. We'd have to get a, a wire uh, to connect it to the internet, okay? We'd then have to install a software stack on our this machine that we bought. That would involve the operating system, a programming language, a database, whatever the um, framework is that we're gonna use, and then finally our application code, okay? Um, and then, um, we'd have to maintain that software stack and we'd have to monitor this machine to make sure that you know the network's still connected and the machine hasn't gone down and the power hasn't gone out and if any of those things happen we have to run in you know and 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 check on it and you know back in 1998 people were running around with pagers all the time okay and and they would get paged when someone noticed that there was something you know, wrong with their deployment and they'd have to run back in and try to figure out what's going on. Okay, well this whole huge job, which you can employ people just for this, okay, system administrators, they might, their sole job might be to do this piece. This has all been outsourced to the cloud and if you're willing to put up with, you know, a certain amount of delay when the machine comes up and l restrictions on how big your database can be and so forth, you don't have to pay a cent for this. Other than the, um, the buying of a domain name, which I'm going to require you to do once just so that you've experienced it, um, our deployment from now on in the class, you, you, you won't pay for it, okay? We're going to use the free services of CloudBees to do all of the remaining uh, work for the class. And so it's, it's pretty huge, really, that we've gotten rid of this amount of complexity in software development. Okay. Now, what are the downsides? Well, of course, you're outsourcing to some, you know, per, some organization like Heroku, a huge amount of responsibility for actually maintaining your internet presence, and and some sometimes those providers fail. You know, so Heroku actually went down this fall, and it was huge news because a lot of sites, you know, all of a sudden weren't on the internet because Heroku hosts a, a lot of folks. It also turns out that that um, you know, the, and this is kind of you know debated, but but it seems pretty clear that in certain ultra high traffic situations, uh, a provider like Heroku might be qu even more expensive than hiring the people to do it yourself. Um, so um, you know that's not going to you know listen. This is not our concern. Um, you know, at least for a while. I mean, it would be lovely to have that concern. Um, but but for small sites, and I mean you know sites like you know University of Hawaii or you know even bigger. Okay, so by small I don't mean you know Surferpedia, um, but for sites that aren't Facebook, aren't Twitter, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The, you know uh, those LinkedIn, those huge sites, you know, um, 
may or may not want to think about whether they want to go with one of those providers or use something like you know Rackspace or something to just buy you know rent metal. Anyway, for small sites, for people who are starting up companies, for students, cloud computing, there's just no there's no other way. There's nothing to even think about. This is so obviously a great way to go. Okay, so I'm mean, really excited to to um, provide this module to you. I think you're going to really love knowing how to do this. You're going to find all sorts of opportunities, create little websites and put them up on the net in your spare time on a weekend for a hobby. Um, you know, this is really giving you an opportunity to to get engaged. You know, with the with the world through your abilities to to build websites.